Hi to uh, Nabila. Can you please say a big shout out to Amir Khan, the boxer, from his number one fan? Yeah, big up Amir Khan, the boxer as well. I'm more famous than Amir Khan in Bolton. In Bolton Market, just go there. Mention the name, Amir Khan, to give you a clap like that. Yeah, we know him. Say Peter K. Say Vernon K. I'll give you a bit more of a clap. Say Celebrity Wax. The faint, the claps to the floor. The ambulances have to be called. Oh my gosh. That's the reaction I get in Bolton Market. I have a notebook uh, which we uh, read from time to time on the show. It's a blue notebook. There's pictures of it online. It's called Wax's Notebook. And I um, make notes in my notebook and we just read through them. Um, that's it, really. It's not rocket science. Supermarkets. <laughs> my favourite topic. I made a note about supermarkets. The other day, I was at the supermarket and it was absolutely rammed and there was nowhere to park the car. And I was watching this one lady, she was driving a Nissan Micro W Reg. She decided to park, um, do you know the shopping trolley bays? She's trying to get a car, or squeeze a car, into that. Okay, the free stuff in the morning papers. The Independent, some free magazines, absolutely free. Daily Star, a free chocolate advent calendar. The News of the World. <laughs> Why aren't you surprised with this offer? The News of the World, some cheap hotel rooms. <laughs> Works on. BBC Asian Network. It's that time to get life advice now on the BBC Asian Network with my life advisor, Imran. Hello, Imran, are you there? Hi, Wax, how are you? I'm very well. Can we get some life advice? Yes, of course. Should I go on holiday with my friends or my parents? If I go with my parents, they pay for everything, but with friends, I have to pay my own way. What should I do? Um, definitely just uh, go, with, go with the parents. It's a lot cheaper. Go with the parents. a lot cheaper. OK, excellent. We have Shaq saying, uh, question for Imran. How can I impress the in-laws? I'm going to see them for the first time. Confused. Well, firstly, you need to shave um, and also use moisturiser on your face. So I received an email from a guy called Wakar Said. Wouldn't it be interesting to actually speak to Wakar Said? So Wakar Said actually speaks to Wakar Said. Now I'm Wakar Said based in the UK. This is Wakar Said based in the USA. Let's speak to him now. Hello Wakar Said, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How's it going? I'm well. How are you Wakar Said? This is so surreal. I'm pretty good, man. How's everything? I'm all right. I'm, all, I'm already feeling a connection. Yeah, no, it seems like we already got a lot in common. Oh, exactly, it's like we're brothers. So how do you spell your name? Tell us. Uh, it's W-A-Q-A-S. Yeah, same as mine. And your surname? And, uh, S-A-E-E-D. Wow. Same spelling. Nice, I like it. And you were just Googling the internet, and you thought, huh, why not type in my name and see what comes up? Yeah, I figured everybody's seen here and there, and I figured it was my turn to, you know, Google my name and see what comes up. Exactly. Are you feeling a connection like me, or is it just me that's excited? Oh, I feel it. It's been yeah. excited. Me. Shall we see how much stuff we have in common, Makar said, my fellow yeah, friend? Sure. Right, OK. OK. Right. So, um, are you good-looking? Oh, of course. Yeah, oh. Of course. Oh, man. That is so cool. So am I. I got an email here, actually, from my biggest fan in the world. Her name is Tina. She, uh, in the email, she wrote, um, Ask your friend, Makar said, if he has a biggest fan called Tina. Do you have a fan called Tina there, mate? Not a fan, but I do have a pretty good friend named Tina. Wow! Wow, that, this is just so cool. Right, um, are you kind of tall? How tall are you? I'm about six foot. Six foot? Whoa! I'm five foot, 11.5. If I drank more milk, I would have been six foot. Wow. Oh, sorry, there goes my dog. Right, hey, it's all right. Hey, I love dogs. Amazing. Do you like, uh, oh, the obvious one. Do you like Michael Jackson? Nah. Michael Jackson? You don't like him, oh, right, okay. Well, guys, say nice speaking to you, mate, yeah? Take oh, care. Yeah. All right, bye, yeah, mate. you too. Lovely okay. speaking to you. Bye, bye. Nah, nothing in common at all. This is Jauna from the film What's Your Rashi on the BBC Asian Network. This is the one and only Wakar Said, and it's Friday, and we're feeling funky. We're going to be funky on the Friday next. OK, then, ten minutes to seven. It's now time to spin our little artist wheel. Every Monday, we spin this wheel. It consists of Muhammad Rafi, the legendary Bollywood playback singer, Michael Jackson, who doesn't need an introduction, really, and Malkit Singh, the Bangra singer, 
Hoi hoi, bale bale. We spin this wheel, and whatever artist it stops on, we'll play their song. So we're going to get this wheel ready now. And who will be today's lucky artist? Let me get my sequined white glove on. I'm not being biased. I'm going to uh, put this glove on. Let me stand up for a second and do a few spins and turns and uh, crotch grabs. Let's spin this wheel. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Happy there on the BBC Asian Network, Enrique and Sanidi Johan. She definitely um, mentions Jamaica for some random reason. Maybe Sanidi Johan is in Jamaica. That's it. Sanidi Johan's in Jamaica and she can feel Enrique's heartbeat. There you go. Have a conclusion for everything. And I am a better hero than Enrique, uh, no matter what anyone says. Come on, I was a nice hero. Can anyone show me some love, please? Now, I'm not feeling any love for my hero-ness, rescuing my wife there. Earlier on in the Bollywood reconstruction. Right, coming up, your four, your song request, please. 81869. Will we hear any Michael Jackson? Find out very soon. The sound of Asian Britain. Her to HG, Nadim, Ambi in B24, Honey, Aisha in Croydon and Salma. And hi also to Cam on the text. 81869 with your song request, please. Hi, Bab. Oh, hello. How are you? Were you just eating then? Pardon? Were you eating just then? No. No, no, I was daydreaming. <laughs> well, daydreaming, all right. No, no, it's fine if you're eating. I don't find it rude. It's great. I used to work for um, a call centre. I used to be eating mm-hmm. all the time. Callers used to come on, uh, but I used to speak to the callers like eating bubble gum. And they used to like say, "Excuse me, sir." I said, "Yes." Are you eating? I said, "Yes." I'm eating some juicy fruit. Do you want one? But anyway, <laughs> I used to get into serious trouble. But um, it's fine. You know, we we, we live in an active uh, day and age. We need to eat regularly. Not something you want to just throw into an email because you can never judge the tone in an email either. So, yeah, just just speak to them directly about it. Right. And what if you have a boss? who's a bit like this guy here, and you need to speak to him about a pay rise. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was Lord Alan Sugar there. Now, just say you've got a difficult boss. I'm not saying Lord Alan Sugar's a difficult boss, but if you do have one, you know, someone who's yeah. like really high up and, you know, he's really busy, well, and maybe perhaps a bit difficult and you're a bit nervous, how do you go on about that? Well, you'd go about it in the same way that you would with even if you, your boss was your friend, is just simply be polite and state your case. Just don't get emotional or defensive or lose your temper, which most, say, apprentice candidates do. And don't sound jealous as if someone else in the company is earning more than you. Just say, just just put your worth out there and say how much you've done in the last year. Maybe you've just worked on a massive project and you feel that, you know, you did a good job and you were proud of what you did and, you know, maybe they think the same and do you think that, that justifies um, a pay rise? And if they say no, if they take on board what you've said and they say, well, yeah, you did do it, a really good job but we just can't stretch to it all you got to say is just say well thanks but you know do you think maybe we can talk about it six months later and no one's going to hold that against you because you are allowed to ask those questions um, and just follow it up with them send them an email to say thanks for taking the time you completely appreciate where they're coming from but maybe we can talk about it in the future and that's a polite way it's a well-mannered way and it's a professional way of just dealing with the with the hat um dealing with the subjects and dealing with the pay rise and not making it awkward or confrontational. So it's not the same as dealing with Sir Alan, but, you know, it's one way to maybe just, you know, get a little bit extra every month in that. that do, you know, do you know what, Homer? You're hired. Oh, <laughs> you're, you're hired. Lord I'm Alan Sugar has hired you. Now, can you do me a <laughs> favour? That was great intelligent advice there. It all makes perfect sense. Now, if you can write that kindly in an email, on, you know, <laughs> say, um, Dear manager, I'll give him my manager's name, I'm Wakar speaking here. <laughs> <laughs> we need more money, please. That'd be great. Now, thank you so much for that advice. You talk property and you talk pay rises, both very